Good day, students. In this group, we're going to be going over an example on how to apply derivatives to position, speed, velocity, and um, acceleration calculations. So let's take a look at the example. It says a power ball is thrown vertically upward by picodynamic. The ball is tossed up with an initial velocity of 7 feet per second, 4 feet from the ground. The position function representing the distance of the ball from the ground is given by s of t equals negative 2t squared plus 7t plus 4. So we're going to answer the following questions. Uh, find the particle's velocity and acceleration functions. And then we're to uh, determine what the ball's average speed is for the first two seconds. C, we're going to determine what the ball's instantaneous velocity, speed, and acceleration are at t equals 3 seconds, and what uh, determine what this result mean. D, uh, we're going to determine the ball's maximum height and when the ball attained that height. Part E, we're going to find when the ball hits the ground and how long the ball was in the air. In part F, we're going to sketch a graph of the velocity and acceleration functions on the interval 0 to 4, and interpret the meaning of the result. All right, so let's uh, take a look at uh, part A. Uh, for part A, we have to find the velocity and uh, acceleration functions. Okay, so remember our continuum for finding the connection between position, velocity, acceleration, and jerk, S, V, A, J. And as you go down this continuum, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking uh, derivatives for each step. So going down, you're taking d dt. Okay. So if you differentiate position, you get velocity. If you differentiate velocity, you get acceleration. And when you differentiate acceleration, you end up uh, with a jerk. Okay. So if you want to go from position all the way to jerk, uh, this is going to be the third derivative. So jerk is the third derivative of position. Acceleration is the second derivative of position, and velocity is the first derivative of position, okay? So let's just write down some equations here. So basically, um, S prime is equal to V, and then V prime is equal to acceleration, and acceleration prime is equal to your jerk, okay? All right, so we have to find uh, the acceleration and velocity functions. Let's find the first, the velocity function first. So we know v of t is equal to um, the derivative of position, so ds dt. Okay? All right, so let's uh, apply that to this problem. So the velocity function is going to be d dt of negative um, 2t squared plus 7t plus 4. Okay, note this expression can also be written as, let me put this on the side here, you don't have to write this. This expression can also be written as negative 2t squared plus 7t plus 4 prime. It can be written like that, it can be written as dt of negative 2t squared plus 7t plus 4. So there are different ways of writing the derivative. So I just choose to use this notation, OK? All right, so let's find um, d dt of that function. So what that uh, is asking us to do is to find the derivative of negative 2t squared plus 7t plus 4, OK? So if I differentiate negative 2t squared, I'll have negative 4t using the power rule here. And then if I differentiate 7t, I'll have plus 7. And the derivative of 4 is just 0. Okay, so there goes your velocity function, v of t. All right, next thing we have to find uh, is the acceleration function. So um, we know that <coughs> the acceleration is the derivative um, of the velocity is dv dt. Okay? which is also, we know that v is ds dt, so d dt of v, what is v? v is the derivative of position, right? So we can replace v with ds dt. This is what the acceleration is. So if we multiply this out, we see that a of t is um, d squared s dt squared, okay? 
or you can write this as um, s double prime of t. So this basically tells you that the um, that the acceleration is the second derivative of the position function. All right. So to get acceleration, we'll differentiate the position function twice. All right. So we're gonna use a of t is equal to d dt. So since we've already differentiated the position once to get the velocity function, we can just continue from there. We don't have to go back to the beginning and differentiate again because that would be a waste of time. Since we already have the velocity, we can just we already have the first step taken care of. We just have to differentiate this again to get what the uh, acceleration function is. So uh, if we differentiate this, we're going to end up with negative 4. All right, so a of t is equal to negative 4. So that goes your... Um, acceleration function. All right, let's look at part B. Um, we have to find this the uh, average velocity um, of the ball over the first two seconds. I said speed earlier, but uh, let's make it velocity. So um, the um, average velocity, average, average velocity. Uh, can be given by, can be written as delta s, delta t. So the average velocity delta s, delta t, let's say on an interval a, b, from a to b, um, is simply s of b minus s of a divided by um, b minus a. So basically, the slope of a secant line through a and b, all right? So there goes your average uh, velocity formula. All right, so we are asked to find the average velocity for the first two seconds. So what we're going to compute is um, delta s, delta t from t equals zero all the way to t equals two, all right? So that clearly tells us that a is zero and b is uh, two. Okay, so if we apply this formula to find the average velocity for the first two seconds, we're going to compute s of 2 minus s of 0 divided by 2 minus 0, all right? So s of 2 is what you get when you input 0 into, I mean, s of 2 is what you get when you input 2 into the function. Um, so let's recollect what s of t is. I'm going to write it here. So you can see s of t is negative 2t squared plus 7t plus 4, okay? Note that when you're calculating average velocity, you're using the position function, not the velocity function, all right? So be careful with that. So if I plug in 2 into my function, I'm going to have negative 2, negative 2 times 2 squared plus 7 times 2 plus 4 minus bracket, uh, negative 2 times 0 squared plus 7 times 0 plus 4, all right? And then this entire expression will be divided by b minus a, which is uh, 2 minus 0. 2 minus 0 is just 2. All right, so let's uh, use our calculators to evaluate what the output is here. So we can just plug in 2 into, just enter this expression, but let me show you a trick that you can use to do this quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the original function, negative 2t to the second power plus 7t plus 4, okay? Press enter, so that's, there goes the function. Now all I'll do is I'm just going to store the b and a values into t and then compute what their output is, okay? So I'm going to do 2, I'm going to two, store 2 in t, enter, okay? Now t now has a value of 2. I'm going to go back up and call the function, and then it tells me that the output when t is 2 is 10. All right. Next, I'm going to plug in 0 into t, and then uh, call the function up again, and then the output should be 4, and that's it. All right. So that's a quick way of calculating outputs uh, with different uh, inputs of the same function using the home screen. Okay. There are other ways you can do it, but that's a, a, a one, one trick. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and write down what the output values are. So we have uh, S of 2 is 10. 
minus s of 0 is 4 over 2, which is equal to 6 over 2, which is 3. So it's 3. The units for speed is feet per second, distance over time. Okay? So there goes your average speed for the first two seconds, three feet per second. All right? Okay, now let's go to the next part. Uh, in part C, we are asked to find the goal's instantaneous velocity, speed, and acceleration at t equals 3. Okay, so part C, um, let's start with instantaneous velocity. Um, so instantaneous, instantaneous velocity. That's v of t. Okay, so we have to find instantaneous velocity at t equals 3. So let's first of all recollect what the velocity function is. We found it in part a. So it's four, negative 4t four plus 7. So v of t is equal to negative 4t plus 7. So we want to find the velocity at t equals 3. So we're just simply evaluating this function at t equals 3. So v of 3 equals negative 4 times 3 plus 7 which is negative 12 um, plus negative 12 plus 7, which equals uh, negative 5. All right, negative 5, what are the units for velocity? Feet per second, okay? How about this, how about the speed? What is the speed here? So speed is basically the absolute value of velocity, okay? So speed speed equals the absolute value of velocity all right so we can see that the velocity is negative five so the speed is going to be absolute value of negative five which is five unit five feet per second remember speed is a is a scalar quantity velocity um is a vector it has both magnitude and direction but speed just has a magnitude all right okay last but not the least is the acceleration um, acceleration, we already know what the acceleration uh, function is. We found it earlier in part A. A of t is negative 4. It's constant, independent of what t is. So that tells me that at time equals 3, the acceleration is negative 4. At any time, the acceleration is constantly uh, negative 4. All right. What's the unit of acceleration? Is feet. Uh, per second square. All right, so we are also asked to state what uh, what does this what does what does this mean? Uh, what do all these what does these two results mean? So meaning. All right, so what it means is as follows. So you have to remember that um, the velocity tells you the direction that the object is traveling. Okay. So since the power ball was, was uh, tossed, tossed upwards, it could either go up or down, okay? Since the velocity is negative right here, that tells you that the ball at t equals 3, the ball was traveling in the downward direction because of this negativity. And since the acceleration is in the same direction of the velocity, it's going to cause the object to speed in that direction, okay? It's going to speed up, speed downwards. Had it been the acceleration of pointing in the opposite direction, it's going to mean that the object is going to be slowing down in the, in the direction of the velocity, okay? So remember, if acceleration and velocity are working in the same direction, it causes the um, object to speed in that direction. Uh, but if they're working in different directions, it causes the object to slow down in the direction of the velocity, okay? So velocity always tells you the direction. All right, so meaning is that at uh, t equals 3, the power ball, the power ball is uh, is falling downwards, falling downwards, and so this falling downwards is the direction we were able to decipher from the direction of the velocity. The velocity tells us that the ball is heading down. Okay, so it's falling downwards and. Uh, speeding up downwards. So it's basically going down and picking up speed. 
in the downwards direction. How do we know it's speeding up downwards? Because the acceleration is pointing in the same direction as the velocity. So the velocity is pointing down and acceleration is pointing down also. It causes, it tells you that the velocity is uh, increasing at a negative rate. Okay, so at t equals three, the power ball is falling downwards and speeding up uh, downwards. Okay, all right. For D, we are asked to calculate uh, when the ball reaches its uh, maximum height. You know, what is the ball's maximum height and when it reaches that? So, if you if a ball is tossed upward, what happens to the to the ball? Um, so, if you toss, let's say you have um, Piccolo right here, he tosses the power ball up. What happens is that it goes up, and then it stops, and then it starts to come back down. Okay. What happens at its maximum height? At that instant, where it's at its maximum height, the velocity is equal to zero, okay? It has to reach zero first before it changes direction. When it was traveling upwards, the velocity was greater than zero, okay? When it's coming downwards, the velocity is less than zero. So there has to be a point in between where the velocity has the value of zero and it is at its maximum height, okay? So maximum height, maximum height, is attained is attained when the velocity function is equal to zero okay we already know what that velocity function is v of t uh, is equal to negative 4t plus 7 all right so um, we're going to solve this for t set it equal to zero and solve for t that will tell us when the uh, the time that the uh, power ball um, attained its maximum height. So we're going to have negative 4t plus 7 equals 0. So if we solve this for t, we're going to have negative 4t equals negative 7. And then we have t isolated. You have t is equal to 7 over 4 seconds. Okay? So this is when it attained its maximum height. But the question asks for what is a height? Okay? So um, s max. Is going to be s of 7 over 4. So we're going to input this time into the position function to calculate the position of the um, object at 7 over 4 seconds when it was at its maximum height. All right. So if we input that, we're going to have negative 2 times uh, 7 over 4 times 7 over 4 square plus 7 times 7 over 4 plus 4 okay and then we can calculate this uh, let's do this let's just simplify this a little bit more so we're gonna have um, negative 2 times 49 over 16 plus 49 over uh, 49 over 4 plus 4 over 1 2 goes here 1 2 goes here 8 so that gives us negative 49 over 8 if I want to make all the LCDs 8, I'll times this by 2. So this would be plus 98 over 8. And then times this by 8, top and bottom, plus uh, 32 over 8. And when you do the uh, arithmetic, you end up with uh, 81 over 8 feet. Okay? Let me show you something with a calculator real quick. Remember, we stored the function in here. See that function? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my T. I'm going to store... Um, so I'm going to plug uh, 7 over 4. I'm going to store that in T, okay? And then let's store that in T. Enter. And let's call back the T, that function. And 81 over 8, we've got the same answer. So that tells us that answer is correct, okay? All right, so let's see. What does this mean? Um, this tells us that the maximum height, the maximum height the power ball attains the power ball attains is 81 over 8 feet okay when, and then on the same question we were asked when does it attain its height so it attained this height At what time? Remember, we talked about this before. When the velocity was zero, what time was it? It was seven over four seconds. So that's the time that 
the power of law attained a maximum height. So we obtain this height at t equals 7 over 4 seconds. Okay? So uh, there you have it. All right, let's look at part E. Uh, we're asked when did the ball hit the ground? So let's see, how do we figure that out? How do we figure out when the ball hit the ground? Um, remember that S of T tells us the distance of the ball from the ground, right? So when the ball is on the ground, how far is it from the ground is the question, okay? When the ball is on the ground, S of T is basically equal to zero, okay? So, um, so distance from the ground, to find a distance, um, oh, to, sorry, to find when the ball hit the ground, so, so the ball hit the ground, the ball hits the ground now when S of T is equal to zero, all right? So by solving this equation, it's going to tell me what time that the ball hit the ground, okay? So we know what S of T is. S of T is the position function, negative 2T squared plus 7T plus 4. So what we're going to do is set this to 0 and solve it, and that will tell us the time, okay? So we have negative 2T squared plus 7T plus 4 equals 0. So this is a quadratic equation. Let's see if we can solve it by factoring. So we're going to make a, a many is the XK method. If um, it's a prime quadratic, then we have to resort to the quadratic formula to get the approximate uh, time. Okay, so let's hope this works. AC is negative 8, B is 7. What works here um, are negative 1 and um, 8. These two times to give you that and I have to give you this. So put it in the center, negative 2T squared minus 1t uh, plus 8t plus 4. We break it down to center and factor by grouping. So from the first two, we could take out negative t. So I have negative t and we're left with 2t uh, plus 1. For the next two, you can take out positive 4 and you're left with 2t plus 1. And to finish this off, we have 2t plus 1 times negative t plus 4 equals 0. All right, so using the zero product property, we have 2t plus 1 equals 0, and negative t plus 4 equals 0. All right, so let's solve the first one. To solve the first one, uh, you subtract 1 from both sides. You have 2t equals negative 1, divided by 2t is equal to negative 1 half. In this case, um, you can uh, add t to both sides. You have t equals 4, OK? But we know that um, time is positive, so a negative time doesn't make any sense. So this answer is only valid if we could travel back in time, but we can't do that right now. So we're going to take only the positive time, okay? So um, the ball hit the ground at t equals 4 seconds. Okay, so in four seconds, that's when the ball hit the ground. And then the other part asked for how long does, was the ball in the air? All right, so how long was it in the air? How long was the ball in the air? Well, after the ball hit the ground, it's no longer in the air, right? So it's asking exactly the same question that this answer answered, this question answered. So the ball, the ball, was in the air, air for four seconds. Okay, because after four seconds, get what? Guess what? The ball hit the ground. Okay, so um, in different questions, they ask. We normally ask this question using uh, one of these forms. So I just wanted to show you the two ways. First of all, they can say when the ball hit the ground, or they can say how long was the ball in the air. These two are asking for exactly the same question. Okay, so there, there are goals the answer. All right, let's take a look at part f. Part f, we're going to be graphing the functions, the acceleration velocity functions, and I'm using the graph to uh, describe um, the behavior of, of the power ball. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph these two functions. 
Uh, we have v of t equals uh, negative 4t plus 7. And then uh, a of t is equal to, let me put this in green, negative 4. All right, so let's go ahead and graph these and then see if we can make any sense of what the, the graphs are telling us, okay? So let's uh, graph it. We'll go from 0 to 4. All right, so for v of t, um, v of t is equal to negative 4t plus 7. The slope is negative 4 over 1, and then the y-intercept is 7. So this is easy to graph. So we start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that goes the y-intercept. So negative 7. I'm sorry, positive 7. So you're going to drop 1, 2, 3, 4 over 4, over 1. And then drop 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. So we're graphing from 0 to 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. This is where we're going to stop because uh, that's t equals 4 seconds. Okay, so this is t. And then we're going to be graphing velocity and acceleration on my y-axis, both of them together. So let's go ahead and graph the schedule graph of our velocity function, something like this. So this is our velocity function, v of t. Um, v of t. Let's make it a little bit. Let's make it a little bit longer so that. Uh, it fits. So I'm going to make my V of T slightly longer. Like that. Make sure it crosses that line. Um, so this is V of T. Now next thing I'm going to sketch is my um, acceleration function. Okay, A of T is a constant. A of T is equal to negative 4. This has a slope of 0. Alright. Uh, and a y-intercept of negative 4. So it's always you, there, there's no um, rise. You just keep running. Okay. So start at negative four. One, two, three, four. Negative four. So green is your acceleration function. Okay. A of t is green, and then the black function is v of t. So depending on how you you want to take, you want to look at it. All right. So let's graph the acceleration function. All right. So that goes your acceleration function. Let's label it. This is a of t. Alright, so what on earth does this graph mean? Well, um, first thing we want to note is when it hits, this is the point where it hits the ground, okay? This is the point where there's a, there's a change in direction right here. Okay, so above, this, uh, this line above right here, the velocity is positive, and then over here the, ax, the velocity is negative, but the acceleration is always negative for the entire domain. All right, so we're going to use this graph to uh, describe the behavior uh, of the function from 0 to 4 seconds. All right, so in order for us to be able to accurately uh, describe the direction that the ball is traveling up or down, we have to delineate the portions where the velocity is positive and negative, okay? So let me draw a line right here. Shift it to the right a little bit. So this line where it cuts the, where it switches from positive to negative, that's when there's a change in the direction of, of my, uh, of the ball. Okay. All right. So when was the velocity equal to zero? We already solved this, solved this in part D. This was when T was equal to seven over four. So this value, this value right here is when T is equal to seven over four seconds. All right. Okay, so remember that your acceleration is always negative. So when the velocity was positive, the acceleration was negative, and when the velocity finally turned negative, on uh, this interval from seven power, seven over four to, to four, the um, velocity, the acceleration was still negative. Okay, so let's let's keep that um, in in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and describe the behavior of the power ball from zero to four seconds. So from zero to from zero to um, seven over four, the acceler the velocity was positive, which means that the object was going up. All right, acceleration was negative, means that 
it was slowing down. Even though it was moving up, it was slowing down, okay? So um, let's call it behavior, behavior um, of the ball. All right, so from uh, zero to seven over four, five, seven over four, the ball was moving up. How do we know it's moving up? Because the velocity is positive. It tells us the direction that the particle is moving. The, the ball was moving up and slowing down. How do we know it was slowing down? Because the acceleration was not in the same direction as the velocity. So it's going to be, even though it's moving up, it's going to be moving up at a slower, at a decreasing rate. So um, that's why it's slowing down. All right. Had it been that the acceleration were positive here, guess what? It will be speeding up. It will be going up and speeding up. And at t equals 7 over 4, velocity was 0. What does that mean? It means that the ball uh, was at rest. Okay? Remember, when the ball was traveling up and slowing down, it got to a point where it peaked. Okay? It was going up and slowing down, and at this point, it was at its maximum height. So it stopped instantaneously at t equals 7 over 4. Okay, so when it hit its maximum height, what happened after that? Our gravity and planet nama kicked in, and then the object started to fall back down to the Earth. Okay, so um, from, from 7 over 4 to 4 seconds, because after 4 seconds, um, it hit the ground. To, seven, to 4 seconds, um, what was happening? Uh, the ball... was uh, moving where? It was moving down, right? How do we know it's moving down? Because after 7 over 4, velocity turned negative beneath the, the uh, t-axis, okay? So it's moving down, and it was it slowing down or speeding up in the downward direction. It was speeding up because acceleration and velocity were working hand in hand, they were working together. So the ball was moving down and speeding speeding up uh, in the downward direction, okay? It's just like uh, if you throw something down from a the top of a building, what happens? It keeps speeding downwards in the downward direction until it reaches terminal velocity. So that's exactly uh, what, what's happening here. So there, there you have it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel um, and you can uh, post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. You can click like if you like it and feel free to share uh, this with your friends via your respective uh, social networking program. More cool clips such as this can be found on map.serve.com calculus. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.